Welcome to TransLogic, brought to you by Chevrolet. I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. Now, Porsche is a brand long associated with performance. But what about hybrid performance? So we've come to Road Atlanta for the Petit Le Mans to check out this much-anticipated, highly-touted GT3R Hybrid, a car that's blowing doors off at the racetrack and turning heads in the pits. All right, so we are here with Dr. Arm Brister, the project manager of the GT3R Hybrid. So this Porsche is part of the Porsche Intelligent Performance Program. So is Porsche now moving toward a more eco-friendly automobile? Is that part of a new ethos of the company? Yes, indeed, it, it is a the new tech uh, philosophy. But um, for Porsche, it's also important if we have new technologies that they have to be performant, but on the other hand, green technology. Hence the intelligent performance. Yeah. So with this technology, you're getting extra laps and more of a boost of power. So yeah. tell me how all that works. If you push the, the brake pedal, for example, the electrical motors on the front axle, they generate electric energy. And this electricity spins up the flywheel. And if you push the boost button, the electric energy is moved forward to the electrical machines and you have the um, additional power on the electrical machines. So it's, it's going to spin some extra energy back into it how much are we getting with that? It's 120 kilowatts um, for six up to eight uh, seconds, means 160 horsepower. 160 horsepower for another six to eight seconds? Yeah. Wow. Technologically, it's advanced, yeah. but to drive it is even cooler. Yeah. Um, I underestimated just how much the boost paddle gives you a shot of power. Uh, it's more technical, you have to decide when to use that, which I like, it's more of an equalizer for drivers. Okay. You gotta think about what you're doing. You can only uh, use as much as you've charged under braking. That's yeah, obviously yeah. the whole technique with this car, is using the wasted space from braking into boost and therefore more straightaway speed. Yeah. Do you feel it spooling up when it's when it's getting ready, when you're driving out there? You feel the weight of the car, it's a, approximately 300 pounds, so you do feel the car is a little bit different in transitioning in the corners, okay. but definitely the hybrid system makes up for it when you're on the paddle, but when you're not on the paddle, you do need to be a little bit more aware of it. As far as any uh, gyroscopic effect from the flywheel, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all minimal. Uh, I think a lot of that is the sizing of the flywheel, okay. also the weight of the flywheel, yeah. but no, no issue there, but you do hear it spool up, and that's the kind of freaky. Yeah, it sounds like someone rubbing their finger around the top of a wine glass. It's kind of a hollow hum, oh, wow. but you hear it over the engine, over the radio, so it yeah. gets your attention the first time. What's it like to hit the button? I was trying to sum it up to the old generation. It's like the old school 911 air-cooled turbos. When they spooled up, it gives you a good shot. To the youth generation, I was like, it's like a nitrous shot. Is it ever weird or freak you out that there's this massive flywheel spinning next to you? Are you afraid that it could No, I mean, off? Porsche technicians told me it's totally safe. Yeah. So I believe that. And you believe them? Yes, for sure. <laughs> Drivers are pretty delusional and often live in a lot of uh, desperation or, or denial. No, I trust my German engineers from yeah, Porsche yeah. that this is all stuff that's been thought through and triple wired. So the, that's one thing about the culture here at Porsche is that they really cover their base. Do you think this is some technology that we're going to see in other race cars? It's very good that the manufacturer starts to develop a technology like this and to right. go deeper into that. I mean, that's also what we're here for, to show it, to show its potential, and I mean, also to learn more. I mean, uh, to, if you do more races, you learn more about this technology, and I yeah. think that's, that's a good way to approach it. For us, it's more important to know about technology. For example, we have three pooling systems. The reason for that is to analyze the thermal behavior very exactly. Next step in the future, we can combine it, so the co complexity will rise up, about, but the, the weight comes down. Yeah. The goal is to be more efficient, you know, sure. to run the same lap time with less fuel consumption. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the goal we're going for. So you guys raced this technology at the Nuremberg Ring. Tell me about that experience. It was a challenge for all of us, also for the whole team and uh, for the technology. After the night, we led the whole field yeah. by uh, more than 20 minutes. So it was really <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Then 
one, one hour and 45 minutes before we finished the race, we got the failure on the combustion engine. The yeah. You wouldn't expect a Porsche's engine to actually be what breaks in this. Yeah. You might think the new technology. Yeah, that's right. And um, our combustion engine has a very high uh, reliability. We thought if something fails, then, then of course the uh, electrical devices. But in this case, it wasn't. Just, oh, <laughs> MC engine yeah. itself, yeah. yeah. Are we going to see these kind of technologies on the streets soon, specifically the 911 and some of other Porsche's cars? I think so, because this is a pre-development um, project, then the next step is a 918 Spider, and right. after that, of course, the 911. That's it for Road Atlanta. That GT3 R Hybrid is quite a machine. And we got to give major props to Porsche for really taking the lead here on implementing green technology on the racetrack, making their cars not only more efficient, but faster, which is awesome. And as they begin to win more races, other manufacturers, of course, are going to see this and follow suit. A big win for everybody. That's all the time we have for today. For TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next week. <laughs>